Hey, this is Greg with Include Security, and today's video covers our expectations with proper clock usage. Now remember, the whole goal of clock when it comes to scoping out assessments with our team is to only include in-scope lens of code. So no third-party code, no test code, and no automatically generated code. Now, why is this so important? Well, actually, proper clock usage is one of the most important steps when it comes to scoping an expert application assessment. Keeping clock counts correct allows for us to accurately scope out the assessment, and that will give you a realistic timeline and budget. Now, we're going to go through three different scenarios that we see pretty commonly on our application assessments, so feel free to jump to the timestamp below that most closely matches your code base. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, scenario one. This covers an instance where all your in-scope source code lives in one single directory, similar to a Ruby on Rails application. And so for this one, we actually do have a Ruby on Rails application to demo. And we know all of our in-scope source code lives in the app directory. So what we can do is we can just use clock and the actual target directory, so app forward slash. Now, once that's finished, we can go ahead and copy the clock command we just used, including the output, and send that to include security. Now, if your application is not a Rails application, your job is done. When you send this off, you're good to go. If it is a Rails application, we do expect that you also run a rake stats. So we run rake stats. And then we also give this along with the clock output to include security and your job's done. Okay, scenario two is a bit more complex. In this instance, we have test code or test directories scattered throughout our application. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the exclude dir flag to exclude those directories. Here we can see we're using a Java application. So what we could do is we could run clock on the source directory and we'll use dash dash exclude dir equals test. And that should exclude any test directories. Now, once that's finished, we can go ahead and copy the clock command we just used, including the output and send that to include security. Okay, this scenario is the most complex. In this instance, we have an application with automatically generated code as well as test code. And remember, we wanna exclude both of those because we don't wanna test the automatically generated files. We wanna test the configs that generate those files. So here we have a Golang application and what we can use is not match F. And if you look at the actual help docs, we can see not match F actually counts all the files except those whose base names match a regex that you define. So if you know the naming syntax of your test files or automatically generated files, you can use this flag with a regex to exclude those files in the final clock count. So for Golang, we know we want to exclude .proto.go and underscore test.go. So what we could do is we can do clock period to reference the current working directory and use that not match F to exclude proto.go and test.go. And when we run that, this should give us everything we need. We can send this command along with the clock output to include sec and our job is done. Okay, well, those are the three most common scenarios that we see here at Include. You should be able to take one of these techniques and apply them to your application or your code base, regardless of programming language. Now, if your application has even more complexity, let's say your in-scope source code lives in multiple repositories or it's multiple microservices involved, we usually err on the side of multiple clock outputs. But please, any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to one of us or one of the TPMs, and we'd be glad to assist. We're really excited to continue working with you.